necessary uh, part of, of go forward and being able to move the ball after that. So, um, yeah, I think uh, moving the ball before the line is certainly a way. But you've got to, have some, you know, you've got to encourage your guys. You guys have got to be dedicated to support the ball carrier first. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, from the defensive side, how do you handle it when they come in? Just, just communication. Communication. Um, you know, if they're playing playing short balls on it, sort of off first reserve or whatever. Then you know, we'd be looking to work up and in and, and inside shoulder and, and really try and nail them there. Yeah. Obviously, I suppose if you're using that part of the floor line, does it stick to the bike the part of the floor, isn't it? It's how far you do play the ball. Yeah, yeah. Um, to play that stuff before the line because the defence has got the ability to be in your face a bit more. So, do you find it important that when they are got these fast but it's to try and keep your shape, keep it? Keep the line intact as much as you can, even though it does does bust you up that little quick play and all that. Um, they've got a double dummy half run they use that they they run and play. It's just yeah. How do you sort of combat those sort of that quick, really too quick play the balls? Well, communication. You know, you, again, but you, your aim is obviously to dominate that play the ball. So you know, if they get a if they get a couple of quick play the balls, then your your goal's got to be to, to dominate the next one and slow the next one yeah. down. So you need to get numbers in to do that. shooting up when, you know, if they're coming at you, you probably just need to hold the line a little bit, um, try and get some numbers in it, and then slow the play, slow the next one down. I suppose the same thing, like when you, you do get yourself in a situation where they have got, say, a six on five or a six on four or a, a four on three on you, how do you sort of, is that just oh, communication? If, if, yeah, if they've got over, if they've got numbers on you, then, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, the communication from outside in is, is really important, so. Yeah. Um, a matter of everybody knowing what the guy inside is doing and doing exactly the same thing. Yeah. Can we just talk a little bit about decoys? Lots of decoy runners, lots of move, forward movement at you. Does that cause a bit of doubt in you when they're doing that all the time? They're running their decoys, oh, yeah. unders, lines, overs, lines. And there's a general forward movement of yeah. and movement. And they, they do a lot of their stuff, like the dummy half moving most of the time. They run a lot of good decoys, and the defence needs you need to be able to read that um, and be able to, you know, if there's a decoy runner being, being able to put yourself in a position where you can tackle the decoy if he gets the ball. And if he doesn't, then you're able to slide off that and, and, and defend the guy that's getting the ball behind him out the back. So, um, and everybody else that's outside you is relying on you to do the right thing because they're going to do what you do if you charge in and they're. Their jobs to do the same thing, so the back and leave short on heads. So. I just want to talk about reading the game. Is it a God given thing or is it something that you can coach? Um, some, some guys do it, certainly do it better than others. Um, uh, I think you, I think you, cert you, well, you certainly need to understand the game. Um, I think you can improve it. Uh, but again, you need to understand the game. And, you think, oh, at NRL level, everybody does, but that's that's not the case. Um, so you know, it, it takes a, you know, it takes a, you know, there's experience, there's players that are around you, them helping you out. It's, um, it's not it's not easy, especially you know when the ball gets a little bit wider. If you're at the centres and you've got a couple of decoys coming at you, it's not uh, you've got to make a decision, and sometimes you make it wrong. Yeah. Tell me, is all the the fancy? Setups where you have your compressed up and in slide. Do you find during the game that you've got to use all these as a combination, or do you use just on one set? Oh, you know, you obviously you know, in, in perfect, field in a, position. Give yeah, it a in a perfect world, it'd be great if you could do what, how to defend how you want to defend all the time, but that's very rare. So yeah, um, yeah you need to mix it up, and again, it's communication. If, if, uh, you've got to have everybody's got to be vocal, and everyone's got to be trying to make the guy next to him's job easier by letting him know what he's going to do. Yeah. So, um, and some, you know, sometimes, well, we normally play sort of an up and in defence, but if the ball goes outside you and you're, you're strapped for numbers, then you know, yeah. it's that, you know, then, you, then you need to work really hard and then make sure everyone knows sure. what you're doing so that they can do something similar. Well, what's an interesting take, and I just ask you the question how you play it with, well, using Joey Johns as the example, Stands out 
10 metres the line, he goes out the first receiver. Yeah. Well, it's known that he's there. Yeah. But of course, the obvious thing they've got the deer is a dummy half, he runs the other way, short ball, the centre will be over. Yeah. We watch the tape happen. Yeah. With Joey Johns and those players like them, all points and those smart ball players, do you put an extra bloke on them or do you just. No. You don't, I, no, I don't. You don't. I don't think in the rugby league, it's not like basketball or, or NFL, you can't double team guys, I don't think. You just need to make everybody aware of what he does. You know, there's plenty of uh, ways to show them. You know, you can go through on your computer system and show them every. Every time Joey Jones gets the ball and what he does predominantly. Um, the thing with, play, with great players like V and Lockyer and guys that carry the ball, ball in two hands, it puts the defensive doubt. You know, it's, so it's it's a matter of not ball, not ball watching, not uh, not hanging off because he's doing that, but actually going going to him as a as a complete line, not out of, not out of the defensive line, not not as an individual, but as a group. I just want to talk to you about defending with big sets. Say to me, uh, I guess it's uh, every man for himself, but you get into a situation where you're defending repeat sets, and sometimes you've got three repeat, two repeats. Yeah. How do you communication again, I guess, is it? Um, yeah, just a, like, and just a mental attitude, that you know, an attitude that we're going to keep them out no matter what sort of thing. Um, because, yeah, it's not, not easy, obviously. Physically, yeah. it's pretty demanding. And, um, and most sides, you know, attack well enough in the in, in the opposition's 20 this time. But if you give them two or three sets of six, they're, they're most likely to you know, get some points, a little bit of try or force a penalty and kick it off. So, um, but I think if you, you know if your mental resolve is strong enough that you say, well, you know, no matter what happens here, they're not going to get across the line. And I think you know, it's certainly possible. Bulldogs well, play a straight line of defence, or do they have a lazy blind side? We were at a uh, conference just recently and they were talking about defence in the NRL and I don't know, I really haven't taken that note of it, but they were saying about having a lazy blind side. Do you have your blind side pushing up all the time or do they like that? Um, ideally, depending on the tackle count probably. Yeah. Uh, short side's a real good opportunity to attack if, if the winger decides he was going to be 20 or 30 metres behind the play. Yeah. For a kick, for example, it's very easy to go to the short side because there's only two passes and three passes in the goal. Um, and that doesn't give them a good time to get up. So, yeah, we, I would encourage, you know, well, well, I do encourage our, our short side to be pushing up the pushing same up. as the rest, yeah. yeah. Pushing up the same. Because there is a risk if you do stuff back, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. For sure. And as I said, it's easy because you've only got to get maybe two, three passes to get there. Yeah. Um, you can catch a winger out and just behind the line, wait for a kick. The rest of the guys on his inside under a fair bit of pressure. You just want to talk about attack. Do you have a uh, an overriding principle that you use during your attack? You talk about your general principle for a, for a defence. What about an attack? Have you and something you look for that the player play movement uh, moving forward? Um, I think probably the biggest thing is, is support support the ball carrier yeah. uh, and provide you know by doing that you provide some options. Um, you provide the defence with a decision to make. If you give them enough decisions, eventually someone's going to make the wrong one. Yeah. And um, that's, you know, that's, that's your break, that's your line break, and you try it, hopefully. So, uh, but I think support, you know, and again, communication is important. But it's supporting the ball carrier and giving him some options, you know, by maybe making sure you've got a trial runner on the inside, a couple of options on the outside. Um, and I guess with that, keeping, keeping good width so that run good, run good lines, run inside out rather than outside in, so we run outside in rather than inside out. I guess if you've got general good movement forward though, you, you, there's always a chance you'll pick up something, isn't it? Yeah, I, you, need to, you need to get some uh, momentum in your, in your play the ball first, I suppose. Yeah. So, and, and supporting the ball carrier does that because it, uh, it creates a situation where you don't get three, three defenders on one sort of because they're, they're watching the other guys. So um, if you can create that one-on-one -on -one tackle, you're going to get a reasonably quick play of the ball. You know, if you do that two or three rucks in a row, then you've got to go backwards. Then you know, then you've got an opportunity to, to go wide. Just talking about that dummy half running, it seems to me at some time times it's, it's almost too much of it. It's just the one-off pass. Is that does that hold the game back much, or is that just the way the game is? It a percentage um, play? I think with the t it's sort of. 
I think the Tim Murder rule sort of, to me, is pretty much that, uh, that there's a lot more dummy art on it.